Welcome back to NK Auto's channel. Today I'll be finally reviewing the Tesla screen. I have been with this unit for about six months, so I do have a couple of pros and cons to tell you guys about. Starting off, everyone's been asking about the climate control options. On the left hand side, we have the buttons for auto, off, increasing temperature, and decreasing temperature. So the auto button works amazing. You get in the car, you start up the car, you don't even have to wait for the screen to load up. You just click auto and the fans will ramp up, especially on a hot day. That's perfect, it works really well. Off also works really well. You click off and all the climate control turns off completely. Temperature up and down is what I'm gonna show you next. And then we have the front defroster, rear defroster, and then the temperature increase and decrease as well on the right side. So one thing that I think is kind of a bad thing about this unit with the climate control is it's a little bit sensitive on where it allows you to click it. Uh, one thing also that I think people should consider when buying this unit, especially for like the camera control settings, is that this is all touchscreen. So when you're driving and you're trying to adjust it, it is a little bit hard to adjust the settings for the temperature. So what you, I found the best to do is just click around this general area. You click it once and then this screen pops up. From here, we have increasing the air temperature and the fan temperature or the fan speed all the way to five and you can decrease that too. That works really well. That's a good way of, that's actually the only way of increasing the fan speed on the unit. And then we have next to it is the low and high. This setting does not allow you to click anything on the screen. For this part, which will increase if you want it hot or cold in the car, you have to use these side buttons. That's kind of a, a con, I think, because it kind of sucks that the unit, you know, the touch screen, but you can't actually increase the or decrease the settings so you have to use these side buttons the side buttons work really well but that's one of the cons i think from this climate control setting so moving on we have where you want the air to go we have the buttons for if you want the front windshield as you can see sometimes it's a little bit touchy with where it allows you to click like for example right now it's being a little bit glitchy it's being a little bit slow but these temperature settings allow you to put the direction of where you want the AC to go. So we have the front windshield, which it doesn't allow you actually to click these buttons. For the buttons that you have on the side, like the front windshield and the rear one, you have to click these physical buttons. It will not allow you to click these. But if you do wanna work with those, you can click this little figure sitting down and it will adjust the direction of where you want the temperature to go. So that is one of the ways of adjusting where you want it to go. Also, this off button is connected with this one. So if you want to completely turn off the AC or the heat, you just click off here or you click down there. That's another way of messing around with the AC. These bottom controls do work. It's just you have to have some of the settings turned on before you can adjust different ones. For example, if you want to click uh, the person up here and you want to do an AC control, the only way to have the uh, AC be recurring or coming out from the car is by clicking this button. Then you have the AC coming from the outside. If you want to recirculate air and have the air only be from the inside of the car, you can click this button and then you have the air circulating from inside. Yeah, so that's one of the things with the climate control. I know a lot of people were asking me, but I'm finally showing it off. Then if you get back to the screen from behind, you just click this back arrow, or you can also just click this arrow below. That will also get you back to the home screen. And then if you want to go to the general home screen, you can just click this home button and you're back at your normal starting off screen. So now moving up to the top, we have navigation, radio, Bluetooth, apps, explorer, file media, and settings. I'm gonna be going over that next. One thing with the navigation, you do have to have a hotspot or some sort of Wi-Fi connection to be able to use it. So if you wanna drive your car around and use a navigation, I would just recommend putting your phone down, connecting to a hotspot, and having the unit be powered by your hotspot or a kind of Wi-Fi connection. Next, the radio. The radio works really well, but I do not use the radio because I use the Bluetooth, which is the next one the most. Bluetooth, this unit is really good with connecting your phone to Bluetooth. I've never had a single time where I've gotten to the car and my phone has not been connected or I had to mess around with it. So I think the Bluetooth is a really good option. Next, apps. I'm gonna be going back to this in a little bit because this is where a big amount of the system and the upgrade part of the OEM one is why this is worth it. So I'm gonna be coming back to the apps, but next to the Internet Explorer, for this you also have to have a some kind of Wi-Fi or a cellular connection. I was watching uh, some YouTube, but if you do want to pull off the side of the road when you're going on a, wrong, a long road trip and watch something, you can pull over and set a hotspot up 
and watch some YouTube, which is really cool. I know the OEM unit does not involve that, so this is a pretty cool thing that this unit has. Next, we're gonna have File Manager, where this is where a lot of the customization comes in. You can uh, download some cool background, some music or anything. That's why we have these dongles, USB dongles, where we can connect a USB drive and import music, movies, or any kind of like pictures or any sorts of that stuff like that. So I'll be coming back to this also because I have a video that's gonna be coming up for the tire pressure monitoring system, which I bought with this unit, which I'll show it in a little bit, but I think it's pretty cool also. Settings is where a lot of the customization for the backup camera or the rear view camera and the audio is gonna come into play. I'll show that in a little bit as well. I just wanna finish the showing the uh, top notifications. So next you have the Play Store which is where you can download apps like Netflix or other sorts of uh, streaming networks. So that's also pretty important. Music, this is what's gonna allow you to download uh, MP3 files and import them to your system. So that's pretty cool because if you don't have connection or anything to uh, your phone, or if your phone dies, you can still listen to music through this uh, music app. Then we have video, which that allows you to download uh, movies or any sorts of content onto your system. So if you're camping and you don't have any connection, you can watch a movie with your family or anything like that. So that's pretty cool also. Council, this is where stuff with audio comes in. This allows you to adjust your, uh, your bass, your uh, dampeners, and where you want the audio to be, whether it's to the right, the left, the front, or the back. Uh, next we have Car Auto, which is just their this unit's kind of way of having their Apple CarPlay. If you do want to have Apple CarPlay, I do recommend buying this dongle when you buy your unit. This thing is pretty good over the one that comes in the unit. I think the one that comes in the unit, a lot of people are having problems with connecting and it the phone disconnecting and stuff. But yeah, if you really want a solid one, I would recommend getting the one from the Phoenix Automotive website. And then the phone link is just another kind of Bluetooth that they have in this. And then the DVR, this is pretty cool. Uh, if you end up buying the 360 camera, which is the front, the rear, and both sides, this is where you can control the video output and you can uh, actually see the video from the cameras. So I will be showing a video. I did order one and I will have it in the uh, post soon. So when I get it, I'll show you how to install it and I'll show you the cool uh, the video settings that are come with this actual uh, 360 camera. But yeah, if you want to link your backup camera, you can do it. I have not found out how to do it yet because I do not have the unit. So I will have a video soon of how to do that. But yeah, that's pretty cool also. Back to the apps. This is pretty cool because we have a lot of settings in here. We have the aux settings, which allows you to uh, connect your phone. If you don't have Bluetooth, we have pictures, which is where you can download pictures or you can download pictures of your car and have that set as your background. File manager is where we will import the um, PMG files, the MP3 files, and all sorts of kind of stuff like that. And the car monitor is actually another setting for the the camera and the backup camera. So if you have a backup camera, you can play around with this a little bit and that will allow you to display the camera while you're driving or if you're backing up. Next we have the auto kit. That is actually what this dongle right here is. When you get this, uh, when you buy this unit from the Phoenix Automotive website, you get a car that shows you how to download it. You just go to an Internet Explorer from up here, the Explorer, and you download the APK file that comes with this dongle. And then the APK file is just this app. So once you download it, this app will pop up in your um, app category, and then you can click on there. And then when you wanna have Apple CarPlay connected, you just click on it and your phone connect to Bluetooth and you'll have your phone mirrored onto the screen. So that's what I use most of the time. If not, I'm using Bluetooth. So those two are pretty good options. Next we have the car scanner. This is pretty cool. I do actually have a evap leak right now. My secondary, um, my secondary s valve is stuck and closed. So when I start up my car on a cold start, I do have the shop vac sound. So it's pretty unfortunate, but when I do get the error codes and the CLE um, check engine lights, I just open up this car scanner, which is an app that's connected to my OBD uh, Wi-Fi connector, which plugs into the bottom right here. I can show you right here, that blue thing. That's actually what the OBD is connected to. So going back up to the top, all I have to do is connect it. This will connect through Wi-Fi because the OBD reader actually has a Wi-Fi signal. So it will connect to it. And then from here, I have many options. I can do live data, which will show me the air fuel ratio. It will show me coolant temperatures. It will show me transmission temperatures. It will show me intake temperatures and all sorts of stuff like that. That's pretty cool. You can also do things with 
gas mileage statistics. So when you fill up a gas on gas to the top, you can then set how many gallons you put in and it will show you how efficient your car is on fuel. You have emissions tests, which will basically do a scan of your car to see if you will pass emissions. Then we have acceleration tests, which can do zero to 60, you can do zero to 30, zero to 50, and so on and so forth. And what I use the most because of the shop back, the dreaded CLE engine check engine light codes that I get, I have the diagnostics trouble codes. So when I launch this up, it does check the uh, the codes I have in the car. It tells me what the the codes are, like a P02562. It'll tell me the exact codes, what's wrong with the car, and it gives me the option to clear my codes. I will not do it right now because I do not have any check engine lights for the time being, but yeah, that's pretty pretty big thing. And I think it comes in handy because I do not like having anything on the dash. I know I probably should get a bypass sooner or later because fixing it, I will have to take my intake off. I might do a video in the future, but for the time being, I just clear my codes and I just go forward and don't have to worry about that. If I want to go back to the apps, I just click this back arrow and then click OK. And then we're back to the screen. I have Gmail downloaded, which will let me check my email. I have Maps, Google Maps, which, you know, that's. I think it's a little bit better than navigation, but it just depends on what you like. This normal logo, I know there's a lot of discussion on the forums what this does. This is actually what allows you to change your car in the very beginning of the system. So you have options to change it from that. I think I had a Toyota Corolla, it was a four door, um, but I changed it through here and I downloaded the, the GX and that allows me to have the actual GX 470 on the loading screen. So that's what that normal logo does. The Play Store also just another way of downloading apps. And then the tire pressure monitoring system is for my latest video will be about. It's about the uh, valve caps that connect onto my stems of the wheels and it actually shows me the PSI, the temperature of the, um, the wheels and the normal, that's actually saying that the wheels are in a normal state right now. There's no leaks and there's no uh, access of air. So that's what the normal means. So going back to the apps, finally we have the TXZ speech. I'm not sure, I haven't played around with that, but I think that's just a way of connecting your voice to the actual unit so that you can do voice commands to the unit, but I haven't played around with that yet. Going to the top, we have the off button. That will turn off the actual radio. Next to it, we have a little half moon. If you're, this unit overall, in my opinion, I think it's very bright. So when you're driving down at night, um, you can just click this half moon circle and then it will dim the unit. Also, if you wanna just turn it back on, you just tap it and it will come back up. I will show you an alternative to this that I have a, uh, seen a subscriber comment on one of my videos for the Tesla screen where it does show you a bypass. It's an app that will actually lower the brightness and um, increase it during the day. So I will be showing you in a little bit. I'll download the app and I'll show you how it works. I'm going to uh, post a screenshot of the subscriber that left it and thank you for leaving a message. Then next we have that little dimmer. This is what dims this unit but it's not really working for me, so that's also a problem with the unit being too bright uh, during the night and not as bright during the day. I will show you how to fix that, but then also to the right, we have a Wi-Fi signal. That's going to be connected to my OBD, so I do have a Wi-Fi signal right now, but it's not something that I can use the Internet Explorer or any of the other apps through. Then Bluetooth, I do have connection through Bluetooth right now, and then next to it, it's these two little boxes. That's going to be the way of clearing your apps. So if you have a lot of apps, your system will be a little bit slower. So you can see me just clicking the X's next to the, the apps and that will clear all of the pending apps in the background, which I think you should do every once in a while just to have your unit running perfectly and not too slow. Okay, now to the customization part of it. The settings, I know a lot of people have been saying that the time is off and the time is not save. One thing that I found that has worked perfectly for me. As you can see, it's seven o'clock. I have moved it up by one minute just so that I'm not late. By one minute, I know it's a little bit of, not too much of time, but I just like having everything by a minute ahead. One thing you can do with date and time, this, set it to your time, set it to your month, everything. This thing you shouldn't do on, but then also with that, you have to go to settings up on top, then do more settings. And then from here, you can scroll down a little bit and then we have system, language, time, backup, and updates. From here, the thing I have done so that each time when I reboot it, it does not go to a random time, date and time, set this to your, uh, your time zone. So for my time zone in North America, it is central time 
daylight time, which is 5 GMT right now. And then I have it for, you know, in the United States, I know in Europe and other countries, they have 24 hour format, but I just have it as normal um, time format. So just till 24 hours, till 12, and then it switches back to one. And that's what you can play around with if you want to customize your time. And if the time is not saving, just make sure to go to the settings, then do more settings, and then click the time zone and make sure you save your time zone. And then going back to the settings here, I know that if you want to have the screen be full screen, you can just double tap it and then it will go completely out. And if you want to have the bottom portion of the gyroscope back up, just click it again and you have this bottom part. I have not figured out for the six months of me owning the system how to calibrate these. I know that it's saying north, but up here it's saying east. So it's a little bit different of a calibration. I don't know if it's something to do with the gyroscope that's in the unit or not, but this is something you have to play around with. If anyone knows, please sure, uh, make sure to leave a comment how you fixed it. But yeah, that's just one of the things that it's a con for this unit. And then the dimmer, which is I was explaining, during the day, it's not bright enough. And during the night, you know, it's too bright. These settings, I will show how to fix. A subscriber has showed me how. So I will be showing that in a little bit. But besides that equalizer, that will also be the sound. You can increase your bass, your middle, your treble, and all that. I just left it at normal. I don't mess around with that. I don't want to blow my speakers. I already have pretty bad speakers. The Mark Levinson system is not the best, I've got to say. So that's pretty much about it. Everything else in the unit, I think, is pretty good. Just with the climate control, you got to mess around with it a little bit. Um, the wheel settings, one more thing. The wheel settings all work for me. The increasing, this is increasing the volume. This is decreasing. This changes the, the mode. So if you want to do radio, uh, Bluetooth, or any of that, that changes it. This um, changes the apps. So this will change the radio as well. Right now I'll turn it off. By turning it off to mute it, you can just click this. That will mute the audio. And then up here, this still works, which I'm pretty impressed with. This will um, hang up the call or answer it which is a pretty cool thing too. Uh, I didn't think this would work with the unit, but somehow I think the Canvas system that is put into the unit changes all the settings and it actually does work. So I think it's pretty uh, pretty impressive that it does work. Um, also one thing with the unit when it's installed, I know that these USB dongles come to the side. There's a lot of customization that you can put. I have this Apple CarPlay and this tire pressure monitoring system. There's a couple other things that you can have in here. Um, so. Just look around on the website and you can have the backup camera, the 360 view, all that. One other pretty big problem that I know a couple of people have been talking to me about is that the climate control doesn't work as I've shown. To get to this, what I've seen is you click on settings, you do more settings. And I showed this a little bit in the Tesla installation video, but you gotta go back until you have these settings on the side here, that drop down. And you're gonna go to install set and then it's gonna ask you for a code. I know for my screen at least, the code is 8861. And then this will take you to like the more advanced settings, which I guess you gotta be more experienced to mess around with these. Cause if you do get a couple of these wrong, you can mess up the system a little bit. So to get the backup camera, I know a couple of people have been saying that their cap backup camera is not working when they pop it into reverse. So these car type, this will, also increase your climate control settings so if none of the settings are working make sure to go to the toyota which because this screen does not have lexus because this is a i guess a european system so go to toyota and select 2002 2009 prado uh toyota prado disc high this will allow you to use more of the climate control settings so if you're having any problems just make sure to click on that and then if you do not have the the gx popping up on the front once you click this you can then go to the logos the logos Make sure for the protocol you have BNR with AC. If you don't have this with AC, none of your AC controls will work. Then car, if you just leave that blank. Then boot logo. So we have the option for Toyota Prado or the Lexus GX470. Make sure to click on Lexus GX470, click OK, and then from boot logo, go to homepage logo, and then select GX470 again. From there, if you select both of those, you will have a GX470 pop up on your system once it's rebooting. Next, I'm gonna show you so let me go back. We're gonna go over the backup camera, the reverse video format. If your backup camera is not working with the format you have right now, just mess around with these. There's four different options. So just play around with whichever option works. I know that some people have been saying that the U, 
YUV signal has worked the best for them. So if the CVBS does not work, use the YUV 720p signal. That one has also worked for a good amount of people. And then you can see the settings for me. I have left everything on off for the most part until we get to the um, the bottom here, which is gonna be the pop-up logo after entering the whole page. I leave it on, on so I can see the, um, the GX logo pop up. And then other things which you can control the volume. I have shown people how to set the volume before installing the unit so you do not get any obnoxious um, too loud or too low. So just make sure you leave everything as it is And then one last thing with the settings, if you go to more settings, when I start up the unit, I always got that obnoxious ding notification sound. So the way I got rid of that is I went to the sound and where is it? The notification is going to be right here. Then you go to advanced and then this is the default notification sound. I just downloaded from online here. I just went online and looked up a 12 second um, blank mp3 file. I downloaded it onto a USB drive and then I just imported it into the uh, the USB dongle from here and then I set that as the notification sound. You just go through here and you go through the media storage or the ES file explorer and just import that so that each time you start up the car you don't get that obnoxious loud notification sound. Besides that, all we have left is just the the brightness on the screen. Everything in this unit I think is it's a way way better upgrade from the OEM one. I think that if you're in the market of buying one, definitely get one. There are a couple of cons with just the screen being a little bit sensitive sometimes, but overall, I think it's a pretty solid option to get. So we're gonna wanna use for the brightness, the app is called Luxlight. So you go to Play Store, and once you have a cellular connection, I'm connected to my hotspot. You just go up here, and then you look on Lux Space Light. All right, and then this is gonna be the app. We're gonna download it, install it onto the system, accept, okay, skip this, okay. Now we're gonna go back to, we're gonna let it download. Once it's downloaded, back to home, right here, the apps. Okay, for the downloads, let's see. Now that it's downloaded, we just open it up. And then we do settings. And we're gonna click on, let's see. Apps just use its access. And then Luxlight, we're gonna click on allow. And that will allow the actual app to control the setting and the brightness of the unit. So then we're gonna go to Luxlight Press to enable Luxlight. After enabling, Luxlight can be disabled after again in the settings. So after opening up the app, we have some settings in here. We have adjust on wake. Periodically, we have all of these. Dynamically on wake, manually, ascendingly. So we're gonna use the day. During the day, or let's see, I'll, pl I'll play around with it. Smart is gonna be to enable smart profiling, switching and more. Please support development and purchase the Okay, so we're not gonna be purchasing that. We'll just leave it for day. On day, we're gonna have it on max brightness. Okay, and then during the night, we're gonna have it set to, I think that should be a good setting for the night. So yeah, that's about it. It's a pretty good way of adjusting the, the brightness, but besides that, everything should be good. Now it just auto changed it, and let's see if at night, if it goes back. It does, it goes back. Okay, perfect. And we can lower it a little bit more, just like that. Okay, and that's it. That's a way of changing the brightness. So besides that, if you have any comments, make sure to leave them in the comments box. I'm gonna try responding to as many people as I can. And then make sure to stay tuned. I do have a couple of videos coming up, especially with the tire pressure monitoring system install. But if you have any more questions on the unit, I think it's a pretty good uh, purchase. So leave a comment, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave your post notifications on, and stay tuned for more videos.